shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and the mortal body must put on immortality. And when the perishable puts on imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted do not let your hearts be troubled you believe in God believe also in me the Lord close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Peace, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. He heals the broken heart and binds up their wounds. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but take heart, for I have overcome For our light and momentary afflictions are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So if whatever we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in this moment, we ask that you keep your promise of providing a comforter. In this moment, we ask that you keep your promise of giving us peace. In this moment, we ask that you keep your promise of drawing close to us and being a very present help in the time of trouble. God, we ask that as we navigate this very unexpected and painful place that you will be the balm in Gilead and 
we are unsure of the why, help us to trust the who. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray. O oh Lord, our God, from ages past to eternity, you are our dwelling place. You are God and God alone. You declare to humankind we who are dust to go back to dust. How that we long that you will help us to number our days. As we gather here, Lord, to celebrate the life of Noni, we are reminded of you, Jesus, declaring on that day that you are the life and the resurrection. And that if we are in you, even though we are dead, yet shall we live again. Thank you for overcoming death. And now here we gather as those with hope, those with faith, those who look forward to that great resurrection morning. We thank you for Noni, for the life and for giving us her to us and ask that as we celebrate her life, that we will learn to number our own days and to give thanks for the days that you gave her and the comfort that you will give to the family, that you will wipe the tears, that you will hold each one on the shoulders and the pat on the shoulders and embrace and comfort and reassure that you are still God. Help us to be still and know that you are God. And we invite you to be present here with us that your spirit will be here to touch our hearts as our hearts are touched by the life of this young girl who has left us only too soon. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. On behalf of the Oakwood University Church pastoral staff and the Oakwood University Church family, we want to welcome you to this celebration of Noni. I had the privilege of meeting Eunice during my time here as chaplain, and immediately I felt loved. She had this way of just welcoming everybody just into her love, and I felt like one of Eunice's daughters. And if Eunice can make me feel like that, a perfect stranger, I can only imagine how Noni felt to be loved by you, her family. In this moment, I want to welcome you as her family. I want to welcome you to mourn freely. I want to welcome you to grieve openly. I want to welcome you to laugh at her memory. I want to welcome you to love each other in this space as we celebrate this beautiful daughter, sister, classmate, friend, and child of God. So whatever in this space you are needing in this moment, we welcome you to do just that. And we are here to comfort and love you. We will continue with our program 
with a welcome by John Mizan on behalf of the family. to go through. Thanks. Seeing you here sustains us in terms of knowing that God is hearing each one of us for this sort of tragedy that we have encountered. That my work here is to recognize the fact that I am here with my sister Eunice and my brother Paul is here going to talk to us. I'd also like to recognize those who we have in Kenya our mother, whose name herself is Noni. Um, I'd like to recognize that she's watching this. Thank you for your prayers. Um, it's uh, difficult, but we've managed to tell her. And also I'd like to recognize my brother, our brother Sam Begua, who is the one who follows Eunice and all the things that he's done out there. Eldon Degua is really, again, that's the foundation of how we are able to live in Kenya and also be here. Then there is also our sister Phoebe, who is, the, who is basically the most loving person and uh, takes care of our mother and everybody over there. I recognize this knowing very well that after saying that, all our families that are on my mother's side and my father's side get to know this. All we want to do is to tell you that the love of God is what has kept us to where we are. I wish I had more stories to say, uh, but the big thing is here we are and doing this kind of work. In my family, we are only known as, I went to church all the time with my brother Paul and we would always be called Eunice's brothers. We were never known because that's how she is loving. She was not uh, smothering us or anything, but she's just that person. And with that then, because of my junior status and my respect, my utter love for uh, my siblings, Eunice being first, uh, I would like to just ask her to also come here for a minute. Um, and perhaps I can yeah, just say something. One boy. No boy. So it is not scripted, but this is my sister. I never talk on behalf of my sister. She is the one who uh, talks on behalf of us and she's the one who comforts us. And what a pleasure it is to see all of you here to try to say we are together with her. So my sister Eunice, might you, might you want to say something? Good afternoon, everyone. I am so blessed that you're here. Um, I'm gonna say this very simply. The Lord is totally able and was totally able, still is very able even to raise her from the dead. But he allowed it. He allowed Noni to take her last breath. And because he's so merciful and he's full of grace, I know Noni was not alone. So because I pledged allegiance to the Lamb, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, then that's the person I must pay my allegiance to. So if he says that's what it's gonna be, then that's what it is. So um, I am committed to follow Christ. So I know if he allows it, then it's okay. Uh, heaven is still our home, we are still travelers, and when the day comes, we will see her again. Thank you. Yes, and that's enough. Uh, that's uh, Eunice's brother. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I first heard this Bible verse when I was, I believe, a sophomore or junior here at Oakwood, um, and it always stuck with me. So it'll be Ecclesiastes 12, 1 through 8, if you all can uh, follow along either on the screen or on your program or on your phone. 
Um, it goes like this. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall blow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out of the windows be darkened and the doors shall be shut in the streets when the, sounds of the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fears shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets, Wherever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Thank you. Good morning. We're going to be singing together. We're going to sing songs of hope, songs that are going to encourage us as we look forward to that day when we'll meet Noni again. We'll start with 92, This Is My Father's World. And I don't know whether you have songbooks or if you have the bulletin or you can use your device.
this is the Father's world. 449, never part again. What are we doing? We are traveling through Emmanuel's land. We soon shall hear the trumpet sound. And soon with Jesus we shall reign. And never, never part again. What? part again no never part again what never part again no never part again and soon we shall with Jesus reign and never never part again Never, never parts again. 525, hiding in thee. Oh 
trials and often when trials like sea billows roll like sea billows have I hidden in thee or thou rock have I hidden, have I hidden in thee or rock found hiding in him, especially during this time. We'll be singing a different song. It's not a hymn. I will meet you in the morning. It's an older hymn. I will meet you in the morning. What? Okay. The words are in your um, um, pamphlet. A program. I will meet you in the morning. I will meet you in the morning by the bright river side when sorrows have drifted away. I'll be standing at the portals where the gates open. The close of life's long weary day. I'll meet you in the morning, in the morning, in the morning with a hand. How do you do? And we'll sit down by the river.
We will now have our time of reflections. We will ask that all of the reflections will come to the mic down on the floor side and that you will go in the order as printed in your program. Thank you. For those of you that do not know me, I am Jonathan Kimani Murillo. I am the eldest brother uh, to Noni. Um, I also have the distinct uh, honor of reading her life speech, as well as being joined eventually by Serena Campbell. It's also in your programs if you want to follow along. Ruth Maria Gavoni Murillo fondly known as Noni or Maria and named after her only living grandmother, was born to the late Joseph Moro uh, Moreu and Eunice Wanjiro Moreu on the 20th of July, 1998 in South Bend, Indiana. She was the youngest of four children, Zabetta, Kimani, and Wambui. Noni was homeschooled briefly before matriculating through South Bend Junior Academy and Arbor Adventist Academy Forsyth Middle School, Skyline High School, Oakwood Adventist Academy, and lastly, Oakwood University. So you can kind of feel when I say that Noni disliked moving and changing schools. Her desire was to settle in one place and grow in the community, and she found that place here in Huntsville, Alabama, and was determined not to move, to get new mo to move again. She wanted to pursue computer science at Oakwood University, but over time she decided that she needed a break from school. She began to work at Edible Arrangements and grew within the company, taking more of a manager role. Due to unforeseen circumstances, she changed jobs to work at Oakwood University Farms and eventually wanted to start her own business in partnership with Mom. Her last day of work was two Fridays ago when she asked to go home because she did not feel well. She slept through the weekend, and Monday morning, she did not wake up. Noni loved our father. She was daddy's little girl. When we lost dad on May 24th, 2018, she was devastated. The hurt would carry on for years after his passing. She longed for things to change and looked forward to meeting dad at the second coming. I'm sure, you know, um, if they were both still here, they probably would be sneaking out to McDonald's to have their own little treat. They used to have their own little, yeah, getaways. But she knew her way to people's hearts. Noni had a special place for mom because in many ways they were similar. She called mom all the time, crying, laughing, angry, hurt, but always exchanging words of encouragement. Though she was the youngest, she was the one that shined the most. Noni was the most beautiful, creative, and kind soul. She would sing with the voice of an angel, drew beautiful sketches, and she would be there for you when, she needed, when you needed her most. She would make you forget about your worries and smile like there's no tomorrow. She was hard-headed, standoffish, but loving. What seemed to others as hard-headedness was actually the strength that propelled her forward. She was comfortable in her own skin, so much so that nothing could stand in her way to achieving her goals. But on Monday, September 25th, 2023, Ruth Maria Gavoni Moreo was called to rest by the one who gave her life. She leaves to cherish her mem oh, she leaves to cherish her memory of, oh, sorry, her mother, uh, Eunice Wanji Moreu, and I think that the, I would like you guys to refer to the program to read the rest of the names, because there's quite a few, but all of you here. Serena, if you at this time. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Serena. I have known Noni since birth. Um, we have been joined at the hip since 1999, for me, since she was born a year older. But 
For as long as I've known Noni, she's never been someone to be selfish. She's never been someone to be rude. She's always someone that you can count on. You could tell Noni, I need you here in five minutes. She'll be there in two. Noni was always here for me, regardless of time, distance. She was always there. And yes, as Kimani said, she could be stubborn sometimes, but mm. I didn't see it like that. I saw that as someone who could stand her ground, and that's something that I always admired about her. And I know we're all hurting right now, but just remember that Noni's up there looking down on us. She's watching over us, and she's happy now. So thank you. The Lord is my shepherd, he goes before me, defender behind me, I
We will now have reflections by Susan Nkoba, Joel Arama, Helen Etang, Nancy Waweru, Mama Judith, and then Naomi Mathina down here at the front. Good afternoon, everyone. Sister Eunice, Kimani, Wamboy, and extended family members and friends. You are in our prayers. It's been <clears throat> a few weeks or days when we heard the news. I was at work. Eunice called me, and I just cried. I know why. The reflection of Noni to me and my family goes back 25 years ago when Noni was born. I was at the hospital with Kimani and one boy when the mother was being taken to OR. So it pricked my heart, and it was so hard. Just cried, I couldn't even console the mother, but I thought this is so painful that Noni is gone. But we have a hope, and the hope is in Jesus. And that's what we will hold on to with the thoughts and the reflections and the encounters that we have all had with Noni. My prayers, my family are praying for all of you. You know there is a large family. You are in our prayers. We have the hope of the soon coming savior. Death will be no more. And we will all be reunited with our Lord and savior and with our loved ones who have gone before us. May we be all encouraged with the thought that all this will end. It's not going to be forever. Meanwhile, may the Holy Spirit comfort you in a very special way. You are in our prayers, and we will continue upholding one another. Thank you.
afternoon, everyone. All I can say is, Mom, thank you for the honor of being known as parents here in Huntsville. We had a wonderful time together, a great moment, tough, challenging moment. But in everything, we thank God for the privilege of being a named uncle to Noni. We carry that and cherish that in our memories as a family. Thank you so much, and be blessed, everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Helene, and I am Noni's other mother. Um, as my daughter here said, they grew up together. Eunice and I have been friends for life, and um, she is one of four. There's Nancy, there's Eunice, and Carla, and myself, and we all have our kids together. And I met Eunice at Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church, and from then on, we've been friends for life because when I needed someone to care for my daughter, Eunice was a great person. Somebody recommended her, and we became friends. And all our kids have been raised together. If you looked at some of those videos, you saw all of them together at every function and every event. And Noni, as my daughter said, she could be stubborn sometimes, but she was never, ever disrespectful. As we Africans, when we look at our child, one way, you know, all we have to do is give them the eye and they know. Noni was one of those when she came to the house. If they misbehaved, all I had to do was look at them and they went running. <laughs> but um, they have so much fond memories together. They grew up together and our house was, you know, Noni's home. And to Eunice's house was Serena's home. They were all together at every function. As I said, sometimes they would be there for weeks and wouldn't want to come home. And that is what we call family. And when I got the call about what happened to Noni, I was so devastated. I was with a patient and I got a call from my goddaughter who is Wambui. And I sent her a message right away and I said, I can't talk right now, can I call you back? And then I got a call from Eunice. I said, okay, excuse me a minute, this cannot be good. I gotta step out and take this call. And when I heard it, I just collapsed in the exam room and I, we just both cried and screamed, just like, this cannot be. But as she said, as Eunice said earlier, God giveth and God taketh, you know. He's the one that provided us with these lovely children. He chose us to be caregivers, and when it is time, he will take from us. So we need to encourage one another to remember that we're not here on this earth forever, that we will one day meet again, but our job now is to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. So I pray for every one of us here today as we mourn that we will remember that we will meet again one day. Okay, thank you so much, and thank you everyone for coming and supporting the family. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Matt Wawero. I was one of the many children growing up, um, and I'm reading a poem that my mom picked out, Nancy, she was mentioned. Um, it's called, The Day God Called You Home. Uh, you never said I'm leaving, you never said goodbye, you were gone before we knew it, and only God knew why. In life we loved you dearly, in death we love you still. In our hearts you hold a place no one could ever fill. A million times we needed you, a million times we cried. If love alone could have saved you, you would have never died. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. Part of us went with you the day God called you home. Um, and that's the poem. And then I also just wanted to say, on a day like this, it is really wonderful to see so many familiar faces and know that Noni was loved. So, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Zabetta Wambui Boyden, was my radio. <sighs> Noni was my baby sister and my baby. <laughs> I remember when she was about three and uh, I asked my dad, I was like, 
what, what, what am I going to do? And he was like, you know we had her for you. <laughs> so I took her as my baby. Um, so many found memories, so many crazy memories. But what I loved about my baby sister, she was full of life full of life and joy. And I'm just going to share this last conversation I had with her, um, my husband and I, a couple of months back. She called me. She FaceTimed me. And I always had this inside joke, when my siblings call me, something is wrong. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what's going on? What's going on? Because I always tell them big sis is here. And uh, she shared some things with me. And I said, let's pray. And she was like really distraught. And I said, Noni, don't forget your foundation. Let's pray. And we prayed and instantly my husband and I seen a peace that came over her. And so my encouragement to everyone in this room, if you don't know the Lord is your savior, it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. So I give honor to who's due, Mama Kimani, my second mama, to Uncle Joe and his wife for being the parents for Noni. I'm just gr deeply grateful. Bueno, Jesus, as if you were. Praise the Lord. Nina Simama Hapa Mbeleenu kumwakilisha mzazi mwenzangu alioko kule Kenya ambaye ni bibi yake na mm, na Ruth Maria au noni eh, mzazi mwenzangu I stand before you uh, here to represent um, your fellow parent his uh, uh, grandmother in Kenya um, in this occasion she is um, uh, double uh, in this in this regard. Kwa kumwakilisha, nasoma neno la kutoka Yesai 25 mstari ule wa 8. Yesaya 25 mstari ule wa 8. Isaiah 25 verse 8. Nalo ni linasema. Amemeza mauti hata milele. Na Bwana Mungu atafuta machozi katika nyuso zote na aibu ya watu wake atayiondoa katika ulimwengu wote. Maana amenena hayo. Isaiah 25 verse 8. You can read that. Kwa kuwa, Noni amesha maliza safari yake hapa duniani. Noni has completed her journey here in the world. Binti amemaliza muda wake na ameumaliza, vita amevipigia vi, viema na kuitetia imani. She Kwa has hit. finished. She has, she has finished her fight here on earth <coughs> and her faith um, has reached her to that point. Amilinda imani na sasa amenda kwa mungu, kukaa na mungu, ambapo sisi tutamfuata. So ye ya tutukuja kukunani hii. Isipokuwa, tutakuwa wote siku hili ya kumlaki kristo, mawinguni, tutakuwa pamoja nae. Amen. So she has gone ahead of us in rest. And we will be together, we will join together with the Lord when he comes the second time to get us all. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time, uh, I'll speak quick. Marietu wa mako wajita na umu wajiko wa late James Mathew na muri. Marito wa mako wajita kwa Naomi wajiku 
Kwa lead Jeans Malina Murui. My name is Naomi Wanjiku, uh, wife of the late doctor. Uh, not wife, daughter. Daughter, oh, sorry. Of, yeah, of Jeans Malina Murui. That was a mess. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, the daughter of the late Jeans, Jeans Malina, Malina Murui. Murui. The work Imani. The father of Imani. Me, my, fa my first cousin. Was Mama's first cousin. So we raised together. Na nitoe muno. And they loved each other very much. Radoni nake arajitaga tata. Radoni has been calling me aunt. Aunt. Nitoe ni. On behalf ya family ya Murew back in Kenya, idwe no tugire tuena gado. Nima tukomashio aratuhete gadoni. Tuwa agashiaro, akarero, akedagone adu. Ne mwana wede te adu. Tukera gai niwega. On behalf of the family in Kenya, um, we are thankful of how Noni has grown up, uh, become of age, done her work, and uh, accomplished what she has accomplished. Uh, the family thanks everyone for their contribution to me. Ninawa Kimani, Waboizi Kimani, Waboi Munini, Nie Nidimwedete, the family to name Wedete, Na gotura de wiyo tata wanyu. Nina wake maniwe my sister forever. So wamboi, bigger, and wamboi younger. Uh, this is your mother as well, so an auntie. Uh, and she says she will live loving you as long as uh, she's, uh, she's, she's alive and, uh, and praying for you and thinking wonderful things about you. The family in Kenya, uh, that is the one in Idurai and other places, loves you just as much as the one in the Rift Valley. Amen. The name of the Lord be praised. Amen. We will now have our special music, followed by the eulogy.
I would like to begin by extending a word of utmost gratitude to Oakwood University Church for letting us gather here today by hosting us like this. You make our grief a little bit more bearable because we see it as a, as a sign that you're holding us in your hearts and you're supporting us any which way that you can. For all those who have participated, Dr. Kimunto, you just danced on that thing. It was beautiful. Thank you. For all those who had the courage to stand up and speak, thank you. But we know why we are here. Of all the things that I would like to be doing today, there are some things that I really, really do not enjoy, and I would give anything to be doing them today, just so that we wouldn't be here for this. Noni is my niece. So my beloved family, Eunice, my sister, and Noni's mother. Kimani and Wambui, Noni's brother and sister. Our hearts break with you, and all we can do for now is to be here with you and to hold you in our arms, in our hearts, and in our prayers. To the family already mentioned by my brother, Zedaktari, all the way extending back home, beginning with our beloved mother, or as known to our children, Shosho, for whom Noni is named. Uncles and aunts, cousins and friends, thank you for being here with us physically or even virtually. Let us hold the pain that has engulfed us these last few days since Noni left us with a tenderness that recognizes it is and has been an extreme honor and privilege that our lives were touched by Noni's life. So today, I am here as an extension of something that I did a few years ago when Noni invited me to her graduation from high school. She told me that she wanted me to come, and she wanted me to say a few words at her reception and also be her MC. Now, the way I understand the title of MC and what I see MC is doing, I knew I was not equal to the task. And so, when Eunice asked me to do this today, I traveled back in time and took that opportunity and that ask that my beloved niece gave to me, inviting me to come and talk uh, for her, and I applied my extremely flexible definition of ordination, and I took it as known as ordination of me. And so today, after Eunice's ask, I come back to be <coughs> Noni's pastor, one more time, even if it is one last time. Thank you for asking me to do this. <coughs> On Monday morning, this week passed, I missed a call from my nephew Kimani and another from Zedaktari as they were trying to let me know what was going on. Finally, when my brother got a hold of me, the tone of the conversation alerted me rather quickly that something was beyond wrong. Of course, my mind went in a certain direction, but he quickly regathered and redirected me, and he said simply this, and I quote, Noni did not wake up this morning. That phrase, that sentence has occupied my thoughts ever since. 
in conversation with him just yesterday, he told me, or, he, or a couple of days ago, he reminded me that that was exactly the way that our nephew Kimani had communicated the loss of our beloved niece to him by saying Noni did not wake up this morning. A little later in the day, when I spoke to my sister, she shared with me how, upon hearing the news, she had engaged in a video conversation or a video call with Wambui, who was here, and Wambui turned her phone, and my sister could see Noni lying there, and she said to me, she just looked as though she was sleeping. And my sister says, I called her name. I called her again and again, and she couldn't respond to me. She didn't answer me. You see, that statement, that conversation with my sister, that image has also occupied my thoughts. So these two things, this phrase that I heard from my brother, this image that I have from my sister, I have sort of just captured and will not let my mind go. And they have guided the trajectory of which I have thought about what to say today. And what, what can I say? What can I say? See, when the news of my dear niece's passing uh, started to settle in, my, what after it had settled in for a while, the tradition in which I was raised also of scripture and song, started also following some path out and rising within me. And beginning with my, sister wor my sister's words, I remembered a cry of a father who out of the anguish of the news delivered him, cried out in the most heart-rending and agonizing way I have ever ever heard or seen or read. And the father just simply cried out, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. I could imagine that that was the cry in each one of our hearts and especially in Eunice's heart being the mother. You see, David cried out for his beautiful boy because some yearning he held deep within himself for his son was extinguished without it coming to maturity. The number of days were too few. The wishes Absalom had misguided or virtuous did not come true. And even more importantly, the father's fondest wishes and deepest hopes had just been cut off. See, when a young person dies, so much is, so, is ended so suddenly. Such a premature end. You see, life unfolds like a seed planted that eventually yields a mighty tree that serves those around in contributing hospitality to all that come by it, offering shade as a comforting relief from a hot, sweltering sun, providing a dwelling place for the creatures that take flight and those that, and those that crawl, and nourishing the people with life-giving air and nutrition if it's a fruit-giving tree. But what we are experiencing here and have been experiencing these last few days is a cruel uprooting of a life of dreams, both nonies and ours for her, of hopes, both nonies and ours for her. It is an abrupt cessation of a journey yet to unfold. So much promise suddenly paused. We had her for so few days and hoped and expected more. Thus David's cry for his son Absalom and our cry for our beloved is because so much has been lost. The family structure has been irrevocably altered. The place and space 
that Noni would occupy will be and will remain empty. The conversation so particular to Noni, as you have heard expressed, no longer there. If one heard of David's cry for his son Absalom without the context of the whole story, one would imagine that Absalom was such a dear sweet boy, a perfect son for David to cry out of in such brokenness and deep anguish. But you know this story, that was not the case. But it also doesn't take one to live long to realize that there are no perfect people. There are not even that many people who are good. And so religious traditions, ours included, claiming biblical understanding, we craft rules, we come up with policies, we come up with prescribed behaviors and values and craft policies to be observed to nudge us, just nudge us to the proximity of goodness. And, but in doing so, we get lost in the rules and behavior standards and we forget to emphasize the goodness of God, the love of God, and the compassion of God. There are no perfect people. David certainly was not. With his musical gifts, with his divine appointment to the palace, and even in his great reign, he was as imperfect as they come. And so was his son Absalom. And it's, you don't have to take much to continue that. And so are you. And so am I. And so is our Noni. There is a song that I have grown to love. And it captures this so simply and succinctly. It simply says, all my favorite people are broken. And maybe the reason why it communicates so much to me is because I know and I'm aware and I sense that brokenness within me all the time. But you see, to even just live it there doesn't quite quite capture what I want to emphasize this, uh, this afternoon. In scripture, there are lots of stories, some great, some bizarre, some sweet, and some just downright awful in their cruelty and violence. And we refer to these stories by the central character's name, the protagonist, so, so to speak. So we have the story of Opah and Ruth and Naomi. We have the story of David and Bathsheba, Solomon and Absalom. But truth be told, any of the stories we encounter in the Hebrew Bible or the Christian Testament are all stories of God's dealing with God's people. A God, God is the proper protagonist of all the stories of God's creation. A God so vast and abundant, a God so wastefully gracious, so carelessly forgiving, so endlessly compassionate. A God so doggedly stubborn that once God sets God's heart on you or on me and suddenly on Noni, God never relents. That is good news. In fact, if I was a Baptist preacher, I would say that is my first ending. But we go on. I wanted to come here today to remind you and to be a witness to this day that I cannot mourn like those who have no hope because I know of God's resoluteness to be our loving God, the God so smitten by us that whenever law and judgment gather together and call out our names. Compassion shows up and turns the courtroom into a party house. And grace is the song that they play and the song that they dance to. This is the same God who promises never to leave us or abandon us to the end of time. 
And so, beloved, we gather here today because of the temporal end of Noni's life. Even as we long for that apocalyptic end of time, the depth of our loss is due to the span of time given. We all know that we will die, but we also like to forget that as quickly as it flashes through our mind. And therefore, death blindsides us over and over again. And you know what? It doesn't matter if it is a child out of the womb or someone who has lived well into this fifth or sixth decade or even someone in their tenth decade. Death still blindsides us. So my brother's words come back to my head. No need did not wake up this morning. My sister's image keeps haunting me. I called her and she did not wake up. The span of time is the lament beneath the shock. Expressed because we did not have enough time. Or moving back is, did we not have enough time? Did we not have more time? I mean, 25 years, 25 years, that's 25 summers, 25 winters, less than 10,000 evenings and mornings. That's too few. Did we not have enough time? The psalmist in Psalm 77 is in the midst of is in the midst of a lament. Nothing seems to be going well. And underlying in that lament is God, I also don't see you anywhere. And then he gets or she gets to verse ten and says, Hold on. Sort of puts a pause and says, I will steer myself into the place where, let me think this through. And he says, I will think and focus. And to this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your miracles long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your deeds. So another task that I came to do for, uh, for us today is to say, yes, we are in the depths of pain. We are in the depths of loss. But also to just pause it for a second and say, ah, when it comes to Noni, what an incredible gift she was to us. Were you, were you ever the recipient of uh, Noni's thousand-watt smile? You know, where she looks at you and flashes that smile and she totally un, you know, undoes you? Did you ever get a serving of that tenderness? Especially, especially, this is important. This was our Noni. Did you ever get a serving of her tenderness, especially if you approached her with the same, right? But, you know, again, you had some of the things our folks said over there. Did you ever get the look that froze you in your place when you had crossed a sudden threshold that she had not invited you to cross? Yeah, that was our... And, of course, I was going to really downplay the stubbornness, but some people beat me to it, and so now I don't think I can downplay it, only to say, but it's a congenital thing in our family. If there was a patent for stubbornness, we probably could win it hands down. We are a stubborn folk. And if you come at us asking us about our stubbornness, we will doggedly deny that we are. But Uncle John will understand this one. Did you ever, did Noni ever use a term of endearment to you? You know, Uncle John, Uncle Paul. Yeah, I told you that she asked me to come and, and speak at her, uh, at her graduation when we were having the reception. I was between two weeks that were so difficult. I was so exhausted. I was about to begin 
uh, my clinical pastoral education residency, which, to put it as mildly as possible, is a grueling process. And then she called, and I heard that Uncle Paul, and I knew she was graduating, and I knew I was in. And so I showed up and went back, got there late, was, started my training on Monday, and that whole week I was exhausted, holding my eyes open with toothpicks. I was, but Uncle Paul, what was I to do? But he's, he's even a, uh, the best one of all, and I think with the singing that we have done, you know, living up to one theologian's title of a book when he talks about Christian funerals, accompany them with singing. We have sung, have you ever heard, have you ever heard, Noni, harmonize? Ooh. You see, we are a nomadic people, and um, at one point, I don't know where we were, John's place, somebody else's place, any one of those things. But we were singing, and I heard Noni harmonize, and I turned and looked, and I was, and then I got the Noni trifecta, yeah. the smile, the tenderness, and the shy thing that you could do. And ah, uh, I will stop and think about the goodness of God even in the midst of this. There was so much goodness in the gift she was. What do you mean she did not wake up this morning? My sister Eunice, what do you mean she didn't hear your voice? We were expecting that we had more of these experiences. But even as we hold those, those same things about the goodness of God that I'm talking about are also the ones that launch us into the depths of the pain that we feel. Why did this happen? Silence. So we move on to how did this happen and how could it happen? And then we suspect that whatever we get will not satisfy our deepest longing because we can't go backwards, right? And so we go back to why again. And the why is not, not so subtle, not so subtle way of saying, God, uh, where were you? Where were you? Psalm 90, verse 10. It states this, and we all have heard it at one point or another. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, right? And then the psalmist says, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow for they quickly pass and we fly away. Why did the days not add up to 70 years? She, looked, she seemed strong. Why didn't the days add up to 80 years? I know and I understand that the text says may come to, and so it's not guaranteed, but still, why did the second part of the text come before the first? Why did the days pass quickly and she flew away? So here we are to send her off. In other religious or cultural traditions, this is called a homegoing service. And so, as I move towards my conclusion, I just want to talk about home for a little bit, just a couple of minutes. See, home is an elusive, it's a very elusive word. You cannot nail it down. You see, I lived in Minnesota for a number of years and then moved to California. When we left California to go to Kenya, I said I was going home. After I spent some time enough in Kenya on the way back to California, I said I was going home. Sometimes when I go back to Minnesota, I feel like I'm going home. It's elusive. But there's something 
of the understanding of home that is imprinted deeply somewhere within us and to articulate what that means is also to realize uh, that the pursuit of home here on this earth is a fool's errand. No one captures this as well as our Christian singer Toby Mack. In his song about the loss of his 21-year-old son, he expresses some of the questions that I have raised today. Why would you give him and take him away? Suddenly end, could you not let it fade? what I could give for a couple of days. A bit later in the song, there's this line, almost feels like it doesn't belong, like an afterthought. Oh, but it says it perfectly. After he acknowledges what the psalmist says, that indeed life's days are filled with trouble and sorrow, he throws in this line, from whence I get the title of my talk. But this isn't home. But this isn't home. So I come to say, Noni, this isn't home. I believe we are created with a sense that longs for home even. As we know that the best of homes that we have here on earth don't, don't come even close. But I am also weary. I am tired. I see death almost every day in my work. How long shall this continue? In our own family, you saw it in the program. Almost 30 years ago, known as grandfather. A little bit later, known as grandmother. Not long ago, known as father. And sometimes I just let my mind wander and I think of all the, the classmates and friends and workmates and family members and the people I have played with and prayed with and all the way to today, and I think, oh, words fail me. Words fail me. Uh, I am tired of this. And then somewhere in the back of my mind, again, the tradition deeply instilled with me, the songwriter's words raise to the surface, and I hear him asking for me, how far from home? I asked as on, I bent my steps. The watchman spake, the long dark night is almost gone and soon, and morning soon will break. You see, the question how far is distance, but you see, you can only cover distance in time, so therefore it presupposes how long, how far from home, how long till we get home. How far from home is how long until, and this is the deepest longing in my heart, how far until we inhabit the house not made by human hands? How far from home, how long until we reach the city that has no need of the sun or moon to shine in it before the glory of God gives light? And its lamp is the Lamb. How far from home? How long until we reach the holy city where God will dwell with God's people? How far from home, how long, especially for us today, until we reach the city where God will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain? And the watchman hears the question and he understands it. But please do not miss it. The first question is how far, distance? The watchman answers it in time. How far from home? The long dark night, time, is almost gone. The morning soon will break. So, to our beloved Noni, Noni, we entrust you into God's care. Until the promised morning breaks, and on that day, you shall wake up. We commit you into God's compassionate hands until the promised morning when you will hear the voice that pierces the walls of death and you shall rise. So for now, sleep, dear child. We bid you farewell. 
Your days were quick, but we cherish them. Rest in God, rest in God until the new morning breaks. And we will all be home in that beautiful city of God. Until we are all home in that beautiful city of God. Rest well, our child, in God's peace. And even so, come Lord Jesus. We'll ask you to turn to the last uh, page. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you.
we are blessed. We are people who come from a very large group of people in, in Kenya. But our friends are really represented here. My father said we would not have made it because he was a pastor with nothing. Without the Kisi people, the Luo people, bringing us things and so on. He, when I was here, he got sick. I was supposed to send him a little bit of money. Then all of a sudden, he didn't have an account. He depended on God the whole time. I couldn't believe it. And so we have, all we ask of each other is to rely on God and stay near God's people as well and tell others about God because this is how we will survive this. So I thank you all and appreciate especially my brother Paul for saying the right word, in my opinion, of what we needed to hear. And as I see all of you, uh, it's my uh, responsibility now to tell you we go to the uh, fellowship hall. When you get out, you go to the, to the left, to my left, and we'll have uh, our meeting again there. So I thank you. Thank you very much. May God bless you. And those who have been watching us online, uh, also be blessed. And uh, thank you for being patient with us and hearing us. I think that's uh, so. We should proceed and go to the fellowship hall. So if the congregation will please be seated, as well as the family, as we recess out. And if the congregation would wait until the family recesses out, and then the family and all those um, who are here are invited to uh, the repast in the fellowship hall. Thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to sharing more time, memories, and love together during